A couple of weeks ago, I came across a concept called the 12 week year. And it just really felt like the right idea was coming at me at the right time. I had already been thinking about picking up my goals again that feel like they've been in a little ball on the corner, you know? <laughs> they just need a little nourishment, a little love, but they also feel a little bit fragile. I learned everything I could about this concept of the 12 week year, and I decided after doing my research that I wanted to take a gentle approach to the 12 week year. In this video, I'm gonna be talking very briefly about the concept of the 12 week year. I'm gonna talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and ultimately what makes my approach gentle. A lot of the videos about the 12 week year are really about like grinding and hustling and just like really going for those goals. And that's not quite my approach. And so if you are in need of some gentleness in your life or kind of just like a gentler approach to goal setting, and going after your goals, I hope this video is for you. First and foremost, what is a 12 week year? It is ultimately a productivity tool or strategy concept that is designed to help you be more productive, get more done. It's a new way to structure your time in order to accomplish more things. The base concept of the 12 week year is to shift from an annular way of thinking and goal setting. So on a yearly basis or schedule to a periodized one. So you're thinking in their case in terms of quarters. So in three month or 90 day increments, you set one to four goals and you get laser focused on those goals in that short period of time. If you want a Good summary of the book and its context. Tiffany Shelton has a really good summary and also like a PDF that you could use and download, which I would totally recommend. And also I would recommend watching her video instead of reading the book because I didn't like the book and I'll let you know why. So what do I like conceptually about the 12 week year? I do like their shift from annular to periodized thinking. It does make a lot of sense. And they are right in that at the end of the year, you do have that really big push for goal setting and like accomplishing things. And also at the beginning of the year, it's so exciting and so fresh. And a lot of goals, my, my own goals, only talk about me, they fall off somewhere in the middle. And I've historically been pretty bad at monthly check-ins or even like quarterly or mid-year check-ins. And I think that a 90-day approach does truly give you more opportunity for aligning and like rechecking in with yourself and your goals and your progress. Regardless of how gentle or extreme you want to be, there is there's more opportunity. And one thing that they also highlight is that there's more opportunity to celebrate wins and to really think about your accomplishments. Because I know at the end of the year, I try and think about what have I done this year? What have, what have I accomplished this year? Not in terms of a negative way, like I haven't done the things, but like, what can I celebrate? And if you are coming at this process with a celebratory mindset as well, then it could be an overall positive experience. And also, if your goals do fall off somewhere, Maybe they fall off, but also maybe if you need a break, um, there's a structure to it. And if you do somehow fall off, you're never really more than 90 days away from a check-in. So like you're not falling off for six months and like not really realizing it or not checking in. And then it's like, oh crap, I'm behind. I'm not really where I want to be. That's not to say that, like you truly can't take a six month break, but I'm talking about those things that are unintentional. One thing that people who have discussed a 12 week year talk about a lot more so than the book is just like the difficulty of knowing where you'll be a year from now. And we're planning in January for the next year. And my life has been so unpredictable the last two years and I know I'm not alone in that. And it truly is really hard to figure out today where I'm going to be in a year from now. And so one, like my goals have changed drastically from two years ago. In 2021 alone, I moved out 
got my own place, moved to a new city. I decided to leave what was supposed to be my dream career. Like I was getting a PhD. I was, I was committed and I left that, you know, the, to leave, to take my leave of absence in 2022, I had to start thinking about taking leave in 2021. The last course that I TA'd was in 2021. So like 2021 was a huge year and big changes in 2022 as well. Even something like a move can really change how your year goes. And it can be a really, it can feel really drastic. And I have just found trying to anticipate the next year has been more of a detriment than a help. You also get to capitalize on those fresh starts more frequently, which I love. I love a fresh start energy. Um, they, their method also asks you to get very clear, very precise about your vision for yourself and your life. I think if you don't do this, you're wasting your own time. And how far you want to go in your vision for your life can depend on where you are at in life, whether that's one, three or five years. You know, 2022, I decided to change the whole kind of course of my career. And at that point, I, I truly couldn't envision three or five years down the line because I had no idea what I wanted to do. So creating some kind of five-year plan was not really possible or feasible, but like it just was undesirable to me because I had no idea truly like what do I what do I put in there where am I going what's my career like I had no you know and while I took steps to figure that out and figuring out what you want in life can be part of your life vision but having as much clarity as you can really helps you structure your time your energy and helps you work towards something and right now I'm kind of working more of like a three-year plan some things can be an iteration of five years, but I'm not thinking more than that because thinking about 10 years down the line doesn't really do much for me and it's not inspiring to me. So I kind of stick with what works, but ultimately having a vision for your life can provide so much clarity, so much focus and ultimately intentionality. I just feel like I walk around with purpose. Like I know what I want in life. I know what I want to do and I'm working towards that regardless of how large the step is that you're taking. I'll talk more about what I did when I talk about the setup for my totally gear. I also like on a conceptual note, there are three main blocks kind of way of scheduling your life. So there's like a buffer block, there's a strategic block, and then there is a breakout block. Buffer block is truly just like a time in the day, once or twice in a day of just buffer time. What you put in there is up to you. Your buffer block could be for work, you know, like 30 minutes or hour increment where you're doing all those little tasks like emails and like responding to this and that. You could also have one for household, kind of depending on what your goals are, what you're doing. The point of this buffer block is to free up time, basically. When your time is interrupted and you're trying to do deep work or focused work, really, and you're interrupted by the print out that return label, you need to pay that credit card bill, all of these little tasks that not only disrupt your flow, but also like your thought process, what you're doing. And it also just distracting, condense them all into a little, little chunk and do it all together. Strategic block is just truly an uninterrupted window of time in which you're doing work. The, the authors have a suggestion of a time. I say do what works for you. I am incapable on most days of focusing for three hours at a time. Completely deep, like deep focus work. Other days I got like six hours in me and I'll like lose track of time. But just focus work with no distractions. Put your phone on airplane mode and try and be as disconnected from everything else as you can be. And then the breakout block is something that is not work related, that is purely for fun, rejuvenation kind of energy, life is great type of time. Every day, every day, if, if you can swing it, but like making it a priority. What I don't like about the book, back to their annualization versus periodization thinking, I think it's truly difficult to think in a periodized way. I think it's more difficult than they give credit for. And I also think for a lot of people, instead of thinking about a period as a truly individual 
chunk of time that is a year stands alone, I think people are just going to take a year. Let's say I need to do something kind of easier. Let's say I want to write a book in a year. Take up that book. Let's say I write 50,000 words in in quarter one, write 50,000 words in in quarter two, edit in quarter three, publish in quarter four. You've taken an annular goal, chunked it down into periodized into periods. It's still an annular goal and you're coming at it from an annular frame of mind. And they don't really give suggestions on how to change that mindset. I am not under the impression though, just from my own take, that that true shift is actually necessary. In my own design of the year, I have actually removed all yearly goals. So I've thought about big picture, like what would I, where would I wanna be in life a year from now? But when I've come to actually create my 12 week year, I have not created a yearly goal specifically. This is the thing I'm striving for in one year. I'm saying, okay, here's what I wanna do in these next 90 days. And that's my effort of removing this annular thinking. We'll see if it works and if it's even something I want to do. I feel like this was something that I could like truly give a like a true effort at. But I'm also not totally of the belief that disregarding the annular thinking is completely necessary. I say that because If you can capitalize on fresh start energy even more, like capitalizing on the quarters, but then also that it's December, it's January energy, or maybe there's other times in the year that are naturally slower or faster for you. Like if you're a student, that year end exam period or like semester end exam period is a total push that is necessary. And you might really want a week, two weeks, month, 12 weeks of something that's less rigorous. Now, the book itself, I I was not a fan and I actually watched videos first, then read the video and I kind of felt like it was demotivating reading the book after watching all of those great videos because this book is very corporate. It is, in my opinion, meant for a corporate cishet white man because most of their examples are about corporate men, largely white, and also kind of largely rich, just based on some of their suggestions, like taking literally three hours of your day to do anything other than work is absurd to most people. And so I found some of it out of touch. Um, I'm just like not their target audience. And I don't personally love reading about people who go into corporations to like go help them make more money don't love that. I honestly think watching all the productivity girly videos is just like, just better. Just go with it. Do with that. They have cute templates. They have like, the the girly has got you covered. The authors discuss how the year end is so powerful and we have that push because there is a clear sense of urgency. And one of the reasons for doing this periodized method is to create urgency more often. Now, I think this is a recipe for disaster and a recipe for hustling and girl bossing your way into a burnout. While the others do discuss in very small length about not hustling, you know, being careful of that, I think this method can absolutely contribute to that and contribute to setting ambitious goals and hustling super hard to do that. They also, I think, maintain that kind of position in their book. They advocate and state point blank, if you haven't finished what you set out to do that day, you stay at work late until you're done. It's a do whatever it takes kind of philosophy. And there are times and places in life to do that, even within, let's say, every year. But you also don't need to literally live 365 days of your life under a deadline, under an urgency. Like you you don't have to make that choice. They do want to maximize efficiency, which like I can appreciate generally speaking, but it kind of is like a capitalistic attitude about productivity, which is already kind of like, 
capitalist leaning, you know? And it's kind of like taking this idea of increasing profits. You know, like capitalism is all about increasing profits exponentially, which is like not actually possible, but neither here nor there for right now. You can't do that with your productivity, just like you can't do that with the economy. You will peak eventually. Like you will not be able to hustle harder, do more. Like you can't just have a better year than the date than the last before. Like you will peak eventually in terms of how much you can physically do and how much time and energy that you have. And I'm just like not into this idea of always maximizing every year, improving year after year until like what, like how far do you raise the bar? And certain ideas, I, I, I get this idea to like, I would like 2024 to be better than 2023. And like we can, we can continuously grow and evolve as people. But when we turn our productivity or we use that lens for productivity, I think that it can be a little bit dangerous. The authors also argue about tracking and scoring everything, and then also using a combination of lead and lag goals when goal setting. I disagree with these dudes. Um, Like, I don't know, have you ever met a person with depression? Like, there are certain times in my life and maybe yours where having this checklist of your performance is genuinely damaging to your mental health. You don't need to do that. I also think the kind of goals that you set will depend on where you are in life and how your mental health is doing. So this is really important to me. A lead goal and a lag goal. A lag goal is the thing that you work up to. It's something where the result is at the end. Um, As an example, you want to make $50,000 in profits this year. You will not get to $50,000 in profits until the last day, or that's the end of the goal, until the end of the goal. A lead goal is something that like you can measure or do in real time. Something like write in a journal every day. Things that you are doing to hopefully get to the lag goal. So if your lag goal is to earn We'll, we'll do subscribers because I feel like I can think in that terms. If you want to gain a thousand subscribers this quarter, that's the lag goal. The lead goal be like posting two times a week or taking a, a course on graphic design. Lag goals tend to be number focused and like monetize things like that. Lose a certain amount of weight, earn a certain amount of money. And they're also usually pretty quantifiable and pretty measurable. I love a measurable goal, but I'm not in the headspace of that kind of goal setting right now. And you don't have to be either. You do not need to have overly ambitious goals or have quantifiable numbered based goals or outcomes. You don't need it. The authors treat these things like universal truths, but like my personal experiences disagree. So this gets me into like what makes my specific approach gentle and like kind of some context for it. And I feel like the lead versus like goal is a really great example. One of my goals for YouTube has always been framed in the context of of numbers, posting this um, this quantity of content or working towards gaining a certain number of subscribers. Those can be really wonderful things, but I have two things to say about that. Number one, gaining a certain number of followers doesn't like mean anything in some respects. Like that's not the most important metric is what I'm trying to say. There are many channels out there who have way more subscribers than me, but their views just aren't there. It doesn't equal an engaged community. Where I am right now is I don't really care about that number. I really want to nurture this community that is so important to me. And I think sometimes we can really forget about the nurture components of our lives, our jobs, our friendships, ourselves, and what makes being on YouTube so fulfilling is the community, is the nurturing, is the having an impact. And sure, getting more subscribers means that I can have a bigger impact because I truly like want to help people and uplift them. But that's not the only way that I can do it. And also not meeting a goal 
even if I were to create a gentle one, like let's say I said, you know what, in this quarter, let's aim for a growth of a hundred subscribers. Is that possible in a hundred? Is that possible in 90 days? Sure. But in the last 90 days, have I done that? No, for a lot of reasons. And I'm not saying I'm incapable, but not hitting that might be detrimental to my mental health at this point. And I also just like really want to remove myself from this belief that like numbers are everything because in my heart that is something that I believe and always having that kind of goal at the front of things creates a disconnect of like value and belief that I don't want. Let me I guess give you some more context after saying that. That's kind of like a bridging point between what I didn't like about the 12 week year and like what I'm doing myself but some context. I hustled so hard between January and March of this year, worked myself into the ground. And it's kind of shocking to me now just how hard I was working and also just how little like I wasn't getting anywhere. And I've been able to really consider why that was happening. And there's many reasons, none of which are really important right now, um, because I do feel like I have some solutions for working more effectively. But one of the biggest problems beyond the not like working hard, but having very fruits of the labor, that aside, one of the biggest problems was constantly feeling like I wasn't enough. And it was like, I set these lofty goals. And because I wasn't achieving anything, I felt like shit all the time. And it was always like, I could be working harder. I could be doing more. I could be pushing myself. Why aren't you? Like, why aren't you? Like, why why aren't you doing enough? And this constant feeling like not doing enough made me feel like I wasn't enough as a person because I wasn't achieving the goals. And I just like felt like a failure. How I was executing was part of the problem. But this like constant like anxious feeling of like, you got to do the work, you got to hit your goals, you got to do this thing. Oh, I'm not measuring up. No, I'm not doing this thing. No. And like, it was such a nasty feeling, such a gross feeling. And I would truly rather work so slow over the next year, accomplish 50% of the tasks, but feel mentally incredible. I had really big plans But ultimately, I was trying to do like five different projects that might individually take 90 days to finish. But I was doing five things at one time, trying to do that all in 90 days. And it's like, no, dude, that's like two years worth of work. Or maybe that truly is a year's worth of work. But like, you can't do this all at once. I think the foundation of the 12 week year, like you don't have to hustle like they do. You can use it and be productive with the time that you want to give. And that's kind of real important to me. You don't have to give everything. You don't have to give your whole self. You can be productive with the time that you want to give. I don't feel like I'm in a, like a negative headspace or like a depressive episode or anything like that. That's what I'm trying to say. I feel like mentally fragile like mentally vulnerable and like one little like flick in the wrong direction, I feel like it just have a really negative effect. And so my 12 week year is like really focused on building the foundation and like building myself up and like, and gaining that confidence to do the things I want to do. Some of what I want to do is less so about (laughs) my capabilities and more so about confidence. And I think building up slowly, building up little wins is like what I need to develop that confidence. But also like my confidence needs, like we need time in order for my confidence to match up with my capabilities. I feel like my capabilities are like up here, but like my confidence is here. And we just even need to like, you know? Okay, a lot a lot of the girlies I watched have say this quote like, shoot for the moon, land amongst the stars. No, this is not. If I did that, I would not be having it. I would rather <laughs> um, shoot lower at this point, shoot for the stars, land on the stars. Like that's where my energy needs to be. At a later point, I could be more ambitious. And this kind of 12 week year is really more about figuring out 
how much time and energy I actually have. And if I accomplish things early, great. If I accomplish them right on time, great. I just like, this is part of the learning process and learning about how much time I have, how much I am willing to hustle. The TLDR is like, I'm really prioritizing mental health and we are deprioritizing hustle. I technically started my 12 week year and Monday it was horrible. Like some situations popped off and I didn't do anything. I kind of did a little bit of work Tuesday, like a little bit and a little bit of work Wednesday on the goals. And it's just like, it's so gentle. It's like beautiful. Like if you actually want to start the beginning of a goal, that's like kind of a project in my mind, the foundational aspects of those things are so important and giving yourself the time and space to create the foundations that you need. And foundations can be like conceptualizing a project, thinking about the project, but also could be establishing habits, establishing, yeah, we're going to say establishing habits. A lot of us plan our goals with people who we, who we like, we want to be and not people who we are. And it's like, no dude, you're, if you want to write a 50,000 page book and you haven't written anything, you can't plan your goal like you're already a writer because you're not. Like mentally you're a writer, but you haven't practiced the skill of writing. So you need to plan your goal with the, like meeting yourself where you are now, the routines and habits that you are now. And building a practice of writing period is more important than writing quantity. I think this is going to be a good time. In the next video, I'm going to share my goals, kind of like the setup of everything and like how I went about the visioning my life, because that was one of the, one of the things I took very seriously from the book is like sitting down and creating a true vision of my life, one, three, five years and other things. And we can talk about it then. So my 12 week year period is actually not 12 weeks, it's 10 weeks. Um, and it's running from July 24th to October 1st. So it is aligning with Q4. Q4 begins October 1st. It's 10 weeks away, which is wild. And I was thinking like, do I want to actually do 12 weeks? But honestly, I feel like having this be a 10 week kind of soft launch is just perfect. So next video is going to be all about the setup, what I'm using, what my actual goals are, the vision for my life. Like we're going to step-by-step walk you through it. If you're interested in my approach to the 12 week year, that's everything for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll follow me along with this journey. I don't know that I'm going to do like monthly updates. Maybe I'll do like a mid, a mid year check-in at week five, maybe. Um, maybe I'll just come back at the end and let you know how it went let me know what you're interested in. Oh, and holla at me if you're also doing a 12 week year, if you're in the middle of one, you're interested in doing one, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Hang out with me today. I love that I'm back. I love that you're here. I love the energy that we're having together and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.